This video is extra special. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down a full strategy in depth trade plus a scaling that equaled 15 risk to reward. You are not going to want to miss this if your goal is to become a profitable trader. Okay, Prosperity family, and welcome back to another video. Today is a very special episode because we're gonna be showing and breaking down a variation of our entire strategy from the four hour to the 15 minute to our entry on the one minute time frame. Today is not a video you want to be missing or skipping if it is your goal to be a professional trader. Without a further ado, let's go ahead and get into phase one. Phase one is the four hour time frame, and we need to establish a directional bias. So we can very clearly see through this break of the previous high, break of structure up, that the four hour is bullish. Therefore, our bias has been confirmed as bullish. After the break of structure, price pulls back as always and puts in a new higher high. This new higher high is just further confirmation of our bullish bias. So we wanna be trading essentially with the order flow, being the four hour structural points. And essentially, we're now ranging from this low to this high. So we're expecting a pullback somewhere in here or somewhere in here where we can take trades out of and take out this four hour high. That being said, after we've established our bias, we wanna drop down to our 15 minute because the 15 minute time frame is where we're gonna choose our points of interest so that we can actually take trades. Important pieces to note in here, guys, every box that you see represents a session range. This is London, this is New York, and this is Asia. And every high and every low of these sessions is, in fact, a pool of liquidity where orders lay. So we're now in the 15 minute and we need to establish points of interest that we are interested in taking trades out of. So here you can see the four hour structure that we spoke about before. So we're ranging from this low to this high and essentially the breaker structure came in here. So a multitude of points of interest essentially are present. Uh, first of all, we have the reversal breaker structure. So the upside, which came in right here and the point of interest for that would have been all the way at its origin level which you can see price just skipped past and never actually came back to before going and putting in a new high. So after price then essentially put in the pullback, the sell off to the buy, and we broke this high here. That's an internal break of structure upwards again. And now we are left with essentially the second possibility for our point of interest. Interesting point to note is this is the actual leg from this high to this low that put it up. This is the leg that actually broke the H4 structure. So this is gonna have a very significant level of orders from this high to this low. There will be a large amount of orders in and around this area. But we wanna refine this. We don't wanna have a point of interest so big. So we wanna know well, when was the actual sell to buy? When was the actual sell to buy that caused the break of structure? And if you actually zoom in, you'll see the break structure is here and here and the sell to buy that caused it is here. So we're gonna actually refine our point of interest to the final sell candle, which is this last down candle right here. This last gray candle right here. Sell to buy that caused the breakup structure. That is gonna be our point of interest. Now we have a lot of internal range liquidity. We have liquidity here. We have liquidity levels in here. And then we have, of course, the Asia low liquidity, which sits, so that's liquidity in here. So with that said, essentially, price plays out. And you can see one very large candle, which was essentially a news event, had caused a huge institutional move and nonetheless, this move is essentially purposeful. This move is purposeful. 
directly into a pool of liquidity, into these orders, taking out all of the internal liquidity. So at this point, all of the downside liquidity has been taken and we are now tapped into our point of interest that we believe that to be institutional orders that will essentially continue this trend to the upside. So we're not just gonna bet on that and take our orders on here, we're actually gonna be now refining and looking for additional confirmation. So a couple of things, I am interested in this area right here because this is where a large portion of institutional orders have just came out of. So I must be wary in case we see this happen, which is a very probable scenario. So if we manage to get into a position here, it would be definite to take off most of the partials just before we tap into that level because like I said before, there is a probability that there lies a decent amount of orders in here. It just really depends whether buy orders or sell orders depending on um, who is putting orders for each side of the market, who is essentially gonna win. But we don't wanna bet on speculation, we wanna bet on probability. So if we get the reaction out of here, then the probability is very high that price will come back up into this area before either doing this, or essentially we know this order, so it's gonna have some sort of reaction, and then maybe we flip it. So with that being said, now we wanna drop down to the lower time frame, our one minute time frame, and look for our confirmation. So our confirmation is the same thing every time. It's essentially a change of character or an internal break of structure so we tap in to the 15 minute where we expect the orders to be. There's a quantity of demand orders that come into the market, hence pushing price upwards. And then supply comes back into the market and pushes price back down below the low. So there is our sweep of liquidity inside of our point of interest, which is perfect. Always nice to see a sweep of liquidity inside of your POI. From there, essentially just a waiting game. Again, we're waiting for our confirmation price finds further into our point of interest and then as price moves away from our point of interest we have an internal break of structure so now we have had our confirmation this is the confirmation that essentially price has shifted and now we are looking to get into longs now the question is is where do you take your entry from again the same as last time we want to look for the last sell to buy that caused the momentum to the upside. So the last sell to buy, if you look at it like this, we have a low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high. So the last sell to buy is this sell to buy here. So that there is our entry level that is where we're expecting the point of interest to be that is where we're expecting the orders to be so we are just positioning ourselves in alignment with the institutions that actually move these markets that is our only essentially purpose from there we want to go ahead long position on the high stop loss just below the level that's a 10.1 pip stop loss so a fairly decent sized stop loss and then we're going to be looking at this here, which is a one to eight risk to reward. So with that said, plain price out. That'd be an entry level. Price initially taps in, gives an amazing uh, reaction from that level. And then you can see we have another internal break of structure once again. So this internal break of structure here is then followed up by a sell to buy. Now really the sell is inside of this wick and the buy, the first sign of buy in power is in the first green candle that comes up. So we're gonna use the wick to the top of the green candle because this is just too much of a large zone to actually get the, if it was to take the whole sell uh, to buy, it would be almost a 15, you know, almost a 14 uh, pip stop loss and the risk reward would literally just be one to five. So just refining it, bringing it down to a 10 pip stop, making the risk reward one to seven. Now we have eight and seven, break, making up essentially the, the entire risk reward that's available for this trade. And again, not to mention that's TP1. Uh, would like to see price take out these highs here, um, but definitely 
at least this level and then we'll just have to monitor price action from there. So price plays out, still hasn't tagged in this order yet, um, but in order for us to take this order off, we need to see a pullback and then a break of structure. If we pull back and break structure, then we will uh, reassess the situation. But first you would need to see a pullback, which is now. So if we were to see a break of structure now, then we would have reassessed, but instead we get tagged into our position. Um, these are the two positions, not to get you confused. Price comes deeper into the point of interest and then gives us our break of structure. So on the internal break of structure, right here, we can essentially move our stop loss to break even and then just let the trade play out. We should move up to the five minute time frame just to speed up the process of allowing the trade, uh, both of them to essentially play out. And you can see price um, comes into our first TP. So we hit take profit one, awesome. Now we have to reassess, essentially most of the position 80% be taken off at this TP one level and then reassess in price action as it reacts to this level of supply, which should have a decent level of orders in. Um, but then it's just a reaction of who has more uh, demand or supply. See instant reaction, instant sell off um, from there, which identifies that there are orders in there then price starts to range. Now this range here represents the exchange of buy and sell orders from one side of the market to the other. Um, lots of orders essentially will be pending in this area to be initiated at this time. Price ranges and then you can see we have the sell off out of the supply zone which was expected at some point or another. But then we have the take out of those which indicates to us that there are actually more buy orders than there are sell orders. And that is why we kept the initial, you know, 20% or whatever percent it was um, remaining on the position um, because, you know, the chances are that there were more buy orders than sell orders, hence the overall top down analysis. But who knows if price was going to come and refine deeper. So that is the entire video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.